Okay, my latest eBay purchase has arrived. It's a uh, signal generator, a Fluke 660B, 10 kilohertz to one point, well, just over gigahertz. So, um, apparently it has a fault. I don't remember what it was now. I think it was slightly off frequency or something like that. I don't remember. Anyway, um, so I haven't powered up yet. In the back of it is this little board here. And um, it's quite a cool little jumper system actually. It slots in the back. And you just pull it out, turn it around, put it back in again for the voltage. So instead of having a switch, you just got a little PCB, which is quite an interesting method of doing it. I haven't come across that particular way of doing it before, I think. I don't know, I'll see it somewhere else. Can't think where though, but yeah. So it's got a 240 volt, that's what our nominal voltage is here. Well, at least here I'll get 240 volt all the time, so I say 220, I think so anyway. Anyway, um, so I'm going to slot that in, then we'll try powering it up. Okay, so this is where it goes in. You use the card, 240 volt set, and there's a little slot just in the bottom there underneath the fuse. And it pops in there. Let's just try and get it in. It's quite a tight fit. Obviously it's got some uh, decent spring terminals on there. That's got nice, good contact. There you go, that's in. And you can see 240 volts, that's correctly set. Right. Uh, let's power it up. Actually, I might just go and check and see what was wrong with it first, then I'll power it up. Okay, moment of truth. Hmm, dodgy power button. Fan works, display works, so that looks a little bit dim. Hmm. Okay. Power button's dodgy, obviously. Uh, okay. Yes, this power button's going to drive me nuts. That was a mention listing. Okay. Well, it's on now, but that wasn't mentioned. Uh, well, apparently it's doing one gigahertz. Right. I've got no idea to use this. I haven't read the manuals or anything yet. No idea. Let's have a guess, eh? Uh, 50 megahertz. Oh, millivolts. I guess I need to tell it which function I'm doing. Frequency. Here we go. Let's do 26.33 megahertz. Okay. Nothing coming out. Um, AM modulation 30%. Uh, ooh, okay. Internal, isn't it? Internal AM, okay. Um, see, I should really should read the manuals and figure out these things anyway, but uh, let's see. I want to come to. How do I do this one? Amplitude, here we go. Um, uh, 11 dBm, really? Mm. Okay. Uh, microvolts. Right. One volt. My, res no, my monitoring radio isn't receiving anything. So, I'll have to hook it up to the back and see what's actually coming out of it. Okay, I've put out the back, um, and I've set the frequency, and the radio is getting it, but listen to that awful noise, and that's the modulation turned off. I had the modulation here, 400, 400. So there's a big buzzing sound coming through the audio, which is interesting. Um, Yeah, that's going to make things a bit of a problem, I think. I can't measure the frequency, the output is not high enough at the moment. Um, let's go. Can't do 5 volt, 3 volt, 2 volt. Hmm. 
Okay, so it's actually generating the right frequency, but it's got that buzzing sound, so it could be a power supply problem going on here. So let's shut it off. Yes, that buzzing was awful. Right, so it must be a power supply problem. At first guess. Um, sounds like AC is getting through into the DC section, so I'll kind of pull this apart and um, do some measurements and stuff. Go from here. Okay, top covers off, and so, amazingly. The top of it is basically empty. There's like nothing in it. Um, they could have made this case half a size. So that's also the uh, crystal oscillator, oven, oven, oven unit, power supply units. Those look okay. These capacitors, they've got these plastic domes on them, but that I can actually feel this bulging. That feels okay. That's bulging. And I can't feel the other ones too down. Um, so this one's going to recap some of the power supply, which is based on the buzzing, so I was expecting. Um, a bit of dust in there, but nothing too unusual. Fan was okay, but a bit noisy. Looks like someone's pulled the cover off that and lubricated at some point. Um, oh, that plug there is not on very well. Should that plug this there? Gets the lighting a bit better. Oh, well. There we go. So the plug's not pushed on properly. May or may not matter. Um, it's just, there you go. Could have shifted during transport. It's got some tantalum caps on there. To check all those, I don't trust tantalums. Uh, so, we've got this board down here, whatever that is. A little bit dusty, but otherwise, don't look too bad. I probably have to go through and get a bit of a clean. There's a few little inductors and stuff on there, and it all looks okay. What's it say? Relay driver, okay, right. And there's the power button on the back there. Just there. So I might to pull that apart. Well, pull the insulation off it and try and space and cleaner in there and see if I can free it up because it was not latching properly. It might just be it uh, needs to go clean. Hopefully, it'll, we'll clean that up and it'll be alright again. Yeah, right, so a whole bunch of uh, filters along here on the AC line, looks like. Yeah, oh, that's an OF line through there. That's a coax, that's a, that's a solid coax going through there. So that must be the uh, for the rear output option, which is a shame. I was hoping it'd be easier to move it than that because I wanted to put it back on the front. Hmm, that's gonna be tricky. All right, so I guess I'm gonna have to pull the other part, the other half apart. I'm gonna pull all these screws out, but uh, that's what I think the problem is gonna be is in there. Okay, so I've got the bottom cover off now. Um, there's the GPIB board stuffed in there, a couple of little. Uh, IF connections here, come to here. So got a little push on ones, I feel like they're fine, they're pushed on okay. Um, here's the other capacitor I was trying to fill, and it feels like it's got a, um, it feels okay when pushing on a plastic cup and it goes down, so I think maybe they don't all need doing. This one here does need doing, so um, you know, if they're bulged out, they're going to have to change them basically. Yeah, uh, plug in here, that feels okay. So yeah. I mean, really, if you look at this thing, there's so much wasted space in it. They could have actually made the thing a lot smaller. But anyway, could have made it half the height. Or stacked the boards and made it half of that. Would have been better. But, uh, so, this sort of power supply's got to come out. I've got to figure that piece out. And um, I'll just. Oh, I probably will do voltage measurements on it first, actually, to be sure. Just to test what before and after. Okay, it's just a uh, sort of. Got this switch working properly now. 
seems okay. Not done with actually. I just, there's a little grey wire down here. Um, just can't be right at the back there. Can't really see it. Um, just there. And the natural mechanism, the little lever there, which does the toggling for the activation and sort of match the switches in there. You see it moving. That was just touching that wire. So it could be that it wasn't actually able to move properly to the latch. So, hopefully that's it. Okay, I'm doing a bit of clean as well. So, look, hopefully it's all that problem. So I'll need to figure out how to get this power supply out at some point. But uh, I'll say I'll do voltage test first. Now I've got that switch sorted out, it should um, power up a bit better. Right, so I pulled the uh, ovenized oscillator out. The wires were grey, black, and then yellow in the order across here. Um, just for reference. It looks like someone's already had this out at some point. The wires, the soldering wasn't great on them and the, um, the insulation was just slightly melted. So I suspect they actually had a, um, a problem with it. So I'll come over here and this is the actual case. Um, and it looks like it's been opened up because it's got lever marks on it. So someone's already able to go at this. Um, this oscillator is not working. It's, it's, um, it's not heating. So the oscillator itself is running, but it was not heating up. So I've already had a little play around with it, as you can see. Um, and I'll just hooked up. It runs 23 volts and 5 volts on there. And um, that side there is the output. I'm not sure what this one is. That side there yet is. I'm not sure what that is. Um, I haven't actually looked at that yet. Um, but say so it wasn't heating up at all. I took it out. Um, inside here is the actual oven unit. Let's open this up. Oh my god, hold on, let's get the tripod out. This is ridiculous. Let me get the tripod. This will make things a little bit easier. Okay. Um. Okay, tripod. Right. That's better. Now, um, so inside here is the actual thing. So you can see it's been taped up really roughly, so I'll just Pulled it off. And there's the oven. Oven there. It's just some insulation. And um, I've, given, I've given it a little bit of a clean up, just very roughly, because it's covered in dead foam. Um, on here is a little adjustment here, which would be, I believe, is the oven temperature. Um, and so it wasn't heating at all. This was not warming up. Um, see, it's got like a resistance wire around this body here. To create a thermal mass and the course adjustment for the frequency is in there. There's another little adjustment there, I'm not sure what that's for. Um, but anyway, the thermistor is here, or thermocouple, whatever the hell it is, is on there. But it's mounted right there, and it all seems okay. Um, I don't believe there's an issue with it. But Um, you anyway, know what happened is I gave this, I sprayed some IPA all over this cleaner here to try and get some into it, and turned it a lot, and it started to started to heat. Um, but its operation seems erratic. I'm not quite sure, but it's just that it's got a really long stabilisation time, or whether it's um, actually still got some kind of fault where it's not properly heating. Whether it's just trimmer. Or if it's something else, I'm not sure. Um, I actually want to um, maybe just replace this. So what my plan is is to um, put it back together, well, back into its installation, stick a thermocouple onto it, and measure the temperature of the oven, and, and get it up to say, well, I think probably between 50 and 80 degrees. I think is what I've seen reference for oven oscillators. Um, this, when it kind of stabilised the best, it was so hot I couldn't touch the body. Right, so I'm thinking it's probably 80 degrees, not 50. Um, 50 I can touch, 80 obviously not. Um, so I think it's probably supposed to be really hot like that. Um, yeah, so I, I'm guessing this is to set the actual temperature it sits at. So what I want to do is actually you want to get it set to the right temperature and get it stabilised 
and then I'll, what I'll actually do is I'll just um, measure resistance across this thing and, and substitute because I think this is dodgy and you can't really clean it it's not, yeah. I'm not sure if that's dodgy or not but I'm not 100% sure the, um, as you see it's got this dead foam all over the place I'm tempted to try and strip it down um, so it does oscillate it does heat up now I've messed with that trimmer um, there may still be an issue there but I'm tempted to strip it down but I also don't want to break it if it is working now um, there's a slightly dodgy looking joint just there but just very slightly so I don't know I mean it's, it's got this heat sitting right next to all those components so maybe there's something underneath there which is aged um, this board here appears to be the output control board so this is what uh, shapes it into a square wave um, that's my guess it's also got the uh, fine trimmer here as well for the frequency um, but yeah I haven't actually done any good component testing on these the issue with this is that it wasn't heating so that's just what I'm just dealing with right now um, yeah so I'm going to carry on playing with this and I'll come back so I should have mentioned is how I got to that OCXO in the first place um, in this section over here this is a 10 megahertz crystal right there and um, just spin around this way got it on the floor now so I need the bench space the, um, and let's zoom in a bit this point here that's where the OCXO feeds in through the hard coax and it goes through this device here which does switching and stuff like that um, just here so just there is the 10 megahertz crystal that's a trimmer for the crystal and actually when I switch in between internal and external modulation at the test point which is just there you can probably barely see just there test point um, I was getting different frequencies right, so one was from the internal crystal oscillator which when I set when I set to internal when I set to external which should be getting a 10 megahertz input on the back um, this one here was running it obviously runs as well in case the external reference is missing it's like a backup um, but this wouldn't trim the frequency either um, so what I've actually just temporarily done I'm guessing there's a surface mount part on the back or something there's, there seems to be a bit missing compared to what's on the um, in the service manual there should be another capacitor was it 180 PF or something between this trimmer and a, and a crystal but there's nothing here so I think it's on the bottom of the board and the board is one big board with lots of stuff on it I ain't taking that out unless I absolutely need to um, so what I've actually done I've just got a ceramic cap for the time being and it's pushed between the earth and those reactor diodes there it's only 10 PF just to put a little bit of loading onto it and that's actually allowed me to trim the crystal um, to 10 megahertz now before I couldn't trim it, it, was, it was, the lowest I could trim it was about 10 point uh, I think it was about 40 hertz over or something 50 hertz over um, and when you're and that's actually double for the frequency output so the um, here's, here's 100 hertz out at the best so anyway doing that as, as allowed me to trim that crystal there and that's when I found the OCXO frequency was wrong and I couldn't adjust it I couldn't get anywhere near close it's still like 200 hertz out or something 260 hertz out and um, that's why I started investigating that and realized that it wasn't actually heating up and when it once it heats up it comes to temperature and um, and well, it comes to temperature, obviously uh, it comes to frequency and um, then it's, it's actually correct or you know within trimming range so um, once I get that OCXO sorted out I'll be right I might even replace it if I can't fix it um, there's plenty of them on eBay and AliExpress and places like that so it's very really inexpensive just to replace the whole unit and I'll, I'll probably get one that's smaller and fit it inside the same can with a little power supply or something maybe just to um, to work so so it's all used the same connections anyway we'll see yeah, I've started to uh, what's part of been trying to clean it I've tried to be soldering all the board in case that is what was wrong that hasn't helped 
Um, so, putting this apart, um, there's a couple of screws, one there, one there, and there's this three hole pin just here, which is soldered underneath. And what I found is there's a second temperature probe there, there's one there, and there's obviously that one just there. So, it's got two temperature probes, which is interesting. And if you look under here, it's done. Have a PM741 CJ device, and otherwise, there's not a lot going on there. This will be a heater as well, so it's got a heating element here, and I believe that'll be a heater there as well, just to help it a bit further. Um, that's what I think it is. Let's see what I can see here. Trying to turn where the heater elements go to. So that solder pin goes to the heating element. Um, yeah, I was trying to <laughs> figure this circuit out. That's the 12, that's the 23 volt supply going through a diode. I'll just put this down so I can try and point it out. Right, so. 23 volt supply comes in to this point here, that's negative, that's positive. Through that diode, so that's 22.8 volts here, and that's going onto that side of that winding. Um, and it also feeds through sister to that probe, interesting. Um, it also goes through capacity of smoothing and stuff like that. That goes to the negative. Those are those are positive voltage. As does this one here when it's on. Actually, it depends it's positive when it's on the whole time. That's interesting. Uh, okay, right. I know, I know what they're doing. Okay, so you've got 24 volts coming in this pan here. Well, 22.8 volts. Pass a pseudo coil back through to here to this device. That device, when it's not heating, is turned off, and so you're measuring 22 volts or so there. Um, but what it does when it turns on, obviously it shunts it, tries to earth that, or connected to zero volts, which causes this device to heat up because it's switching, and heats the coil, so it's using that spare energy to heat as well, which is quite good. Um, so now the energy has actually been wasted. Um, yeah, so that's how that works. So that must be the gate. So that's a, I'm not sure, I don't know what this device is, I've got no idea. Um, I'm not going to lift it up, I don't know if it's breaking it. So that must be the gate there. So when I've had, when I've seen this thing heating, I was measuring 2 volts and 3 volts. I can't remember which pin it was on. Yeah, two volts and three volts. I was measuring on either of those two pins. Um, so I think this device is switching okay, but it's not being controlled properly. And the control is coming from this thing here. So I need to do some research on that device. I'll come back. Okay, I managed to figure out what that device is. It's a op amp. Uh, the seven four one probably should have given it away actually, because it's probably a different package style. Um, so there's the pin out for it. Um, it's a little interesting. The package isn't quite exactly the same, but it's close. Um, yeah, well, it's, um, there's very little information on them. I was lucky to find this data sheet, I think. But yeah, the. Um, that's it there. So I'm going to have a look at this. And um, see if the device itself checks out. Alright, so I've uh, decided to do some actual testing on this 
trimmer on here. You can see I've got my meter up here. I've got a set of resistance. Currently it's unpowered. Let's turn this off, get rid of the noise. Um, now I'm going to try and probe across the trimmer. This is a little bit awkward. Alright, now. Uh, hopefully you can see with this. You can see what the display is doing. Which I might change to. Uh, where's the rate? I've lost the rate. There it is. Fast rate. We go through the trimmer range. So you should see it will be all nice and smooth. Oh, see that? It's a 5k trimmer. Hmm, that's not right, is it? It's right at the end there. Hmm, 50 or K. That's not right. Seems to have some dead spots in that trimmer, see? Yeah, look at that, that's a 59 or whatever the hell that is. And if I go back the other way, it starts working. So, yeah, that trimmer is what's the problem. I've got no idea what it should be set to, that's the only problem. A, um... Yeah, that obviously sets the uh, temperature. I. What I'll do is I'll take it off, I'll run a separate little trimmer onto it, put it back into its cover, hook up a thermocouple, heat it up until it reads 80 degrees, and start controlling it, and then I'll go from there. Then I'll probably replace it with some fixed resistors instead. Alright, so what I've done is I pulled the little trimmer off, I've broken the side open, and the heat has actually got to it, it's all gone very brittle. Um, and that's the adjustment there, see, it's just flapping around like it's broken inside. So, um, that's what's wrong with it. This is stuffed. There's a little tr you can see the track inside there. That just runs across the track, runs up and down our threads. But uh, yeah, the um, it's not meant to be like that. So it needs a new one, definitely. Okay, so at least I found a problem with that. So unfortunately, I don't have any multi-turn trimmers here. Um, I do have this one, same value. Um, I'll just have to see if I can actually put it on here somehow. I'm not sure. How lucky I'm going to be with it, so I'll have a look at that and see if I can actually get it on there somehow. If I can, then great. Oh, I've got the trimmer installed. Um, I haven't cleaned the PCB yet, but it's installed in there. It's got one leg sticking off the side, but um, I'm not too worried about that part. I'll just cut that off or something if it works okay. So let's power it up and see what happens. Okay, it's heating. That's a good start. Um, I need to turn my scope back on again so I can get my signal reading coming through. So unfortunately, it's a bit of a noise. Oh, actually, I might just go straight to it. I'll just go straight to it. It'll probably be right. Let's do this. I had some problems with erratic readings before, but I think it's just a dodgy connection. Heating, so it's drawing 386 milliamps when it's heating. Um, it's good. Yeah, it's warming up. So let's we'll try adjusting this trimmer. See what happens. Okay, still heating there, and still heating there. Okay, so it's heating right through the whole trimmer range. It's not shutting off yet, so. I'll stick that in the middle and we'll wait and see what happens once it warms up a bit more. I've wrapped it back up in this little box. I've scraped away a bit inside the foam to allow for that new trimmer position, which is in there somewhere. I haven't actually aligned the hole yet. Still heating and the frequency is gradually coming down. So uh, I'm going to have to leave this for a while, obviously, to stabilise, and then I've got to try and get a probe in there and actually see what the temperature actually ends up being.
I'll just dig a probe out. Okay, fished out my EV blog multimeter. Yeah, go Dave. Right, um, first time I actually used this temperature probe on here, so I just, you know, just christening it. And I've got it poked into the packet here, it's just inside the insulation, touching the uh, metal body. And it's 70 degrees right now, as you can see. And it started to control the current, which means it's getting close to the right temperature. The, um, or at least the set temperature. Before, this was really erratic, even when it was working, it was jumping up and down over the place. So that trimmer was absolutely stuffed, obviously. That's what was um, causing those problems. So frequency is getting there, kind of. I've still got some dodgy connections here, I think. Yeah, there's something dodgy there somewhere. Getting some noise. Here we go, that's better. Um, so, see how close that is now. Uh, let's give it another digit. Yeah, so, there we go. I think that's enough resolution. Just want to see how well it stabilizes. Obviously, it should be on for quite a while before it actually gets uh, set up properly. Let's move this one to some seat. So, uh, oh, come on, let me get both in there. Here we go. All right. And yeah, the current's gradually dropping down, so it's getting very close to that set point, and it seems to be stabilized here at 71.4 degrees. So, it's actually setting the um, Temperature quite well, it's quite stable, that's quite good. I like that. Wasn't doing anything like that before. Um, so it looks like I have actually resolved the problem. Um, so, what I'm going to do now is adjust this temperature to 80 degrees, hopefully. So, the trimmer is in there. You can just see it. I don't know if you can, but I can see it. Turn up slightly. Here we go. Let's just see what happens there. I'll come back. Right, so I thought I'd just try a little experiment first. What I've done is I've turned the um, trimmer all the way down to see what the lowest temperature setting is. And it's stabilised at 62.6 degrees. So um, I just want to find out what the medium range is. And um, then I'll just guess that something in the middle was where it's supposed to be. So I'll turn it all the way up now and wait for that to come back up and see what actually the maximum is. Okay, it seems the temperature is stabilising. Um, Current started dropping down to 130 milliamps now, so it's stabilizing quite nicely, I think. So that's 82 degrees. So 62 to 82, so that means it's probably supposed to be 70 degrees setting, um, or maybe 72 degrees because that's bang in the middle. So, uh, what I think I'll do is I'll set it to 70 degrees and um, then I'll align it all based on that. Okay, so I thought I'd just do a bit of research on setting these crystals up properly, or well, those OCXOs. And um, apparently it's like a sweet spot on them where you get the optimal um, frequency response stability um, on the bell curve effectively. And I'm just watching the frequency right now and the temperature. And I'm just trying different settings and just uh, tuning through the range to try and see where that sweet spot might be. Um, I'm thinking right now it's actually quite close to it but uh, it takes a while because obviously it's all insulated you've got to do nice slow adjustments um, to try and get this just stabilised I mean it's pretty stable there but um, I'm still working on it I was going to see what the optimal um, range is there for that one um, apparently the, the, each um, OCXO is usually individually set which is why it's got the uh, trimmer there because each crystal is slightly different so it's um may not perform the same way and so each one's tuned for the optimal uh, temperature for that crystal so that's what i need to be careful of because before i was going to go middle of the range of the tuning um that's probably not the best approach i'm going to try and do it in a more accurate way so let's see we go so i should just mention what actually what i saw happening is i did have this about 84 degrees and the temperature it was about uh, the frequency was about the same as this, and as the temperature dropped, it dipped to low frequency, and now it's coming back up again. So that's telling me that that's the bottom of that bell curve, which I've got to look for. 
so I think the temperature I need is probably about 77 degrees um, see now it's shooting up a little bit it's starting to jump up now it's at 73 so before it's quite stable around 76 77 it was wasn't changing very much on here and now it's changing by quite a bit so I need to um, probably sit at the high 70 range based on those curves okay so here's that uh, web page PDF which I was uh, referring to about the curve so if you're in the wrong point of the thermal characteristics you've got a wider frequency difference for the same temperature range but if you come at a lower point in the curve you've got a much narrower range because it's at that flat spot there so it's this flat spot here and the frequency is what I've got to try and aim for so I've got to tune the frequency uh, tune the tip of the oven so it basically bottoms out in frequency um, just before it starts to rise again so I've got to get it right in that hill there we get right there that's what I've got to tune it for so um, a bit of spill there about as you threw into um, so that's what I've got to do is tune it for that and then I should be okay to put it back together okay so I've been playing around with this temperature and I've got it about 75 as you can see that seems to be one of the better points to have it at um, you see it jumping around a little bit here I've only roughly set it but it's jumping slightly I've, I've still only got one one second cycle time um, if we go to 10 seconds um, we're gradually changing temperatures and stuff and it seems to be around 75 is where it's best 76 maybe um, so I've got the gate time 10 seconds now so we'll see how consistent that is I mean it would be better once it's actually in, back inside its case um, I think I'm actually getting a bit of noise coming from because sometimes I'm getting some random numbers coming up I think I've got some noise coming in from probably from a Wi-Fi system or something interfering with the cables. So it's not the ideal setup, but um, we'll see. I mean, you see, there you go. It's changed quite consistently there. But uh, yeah, it's not too bad. I mean, look at me. What's that rated to? That's um, what's that? That's one kilohertz, one hertz. 0.1 hertz, 0 0.01 hertz. So um, yeah, I think this one here is the 0.1 ppm, is it? That's uh, seven six five four three two one point one. That one here is it? Oh god, one million, hundred thousand suck at this stuff. Don't change it now, it's awkward. Uh, come on. 10,000, 1,000, 10, 1, 1. So that's 0.1 accuracy there. Part per million. Um, So I'm actually, you know, 0 0.01 parts per million really right now. If less than that, 0 0.001. But I mean, I don't know. That's that's only short term. But yeah, it seems to be doing okay. So interesting. If I actually uh, hold this can, I'll show you in a second. See, how it's jumping around. If I hold the can, the metal can there, drops and stabilizes a lot. So I'm guessing the uh, my power supply output is floating a bit too much, it doesn't like it, not good enough ground. So that stabilizes it a lot, so I'm, I'm really happy with that. Um, because considering it's only one second gate time, yeah, let's put it on 10 seconds and we'll see how long that, well, I was really going to say 10 seconds, but we'll see how that goes. See what resolution I'll get out of that. Hopefully it stays fairly consistent. Well, oh, maybe not. <laughs> oh, of course. I suck. So I'm getting some electrical noise here, so that's probably related to the problem. Two nine two. There you go. It's close to the first one. Two nine four. There we go. So yeah, it does seem to like me holding that shield. Anyway. Time to stop for today.
Now I've got the uh, crystal oscillator unit back in again. Um, I've just done some slight alignment work on it. I've just set the course adjustment on it. It's been on for about an hour now, so it's probably um, warmed up enough. Well, just under an hour it's been on for it. So it's just a uh, little bit. So that's the output from the oscillator just there. Let's give a minute. I've got it set up to uh, 10 second gate time and um, maximum number of digits. So I'll take a little minute. There you go. It's not bad accuracy, is it? I haven't adjusted the fine control yet. Um, so it's, uh, maybe it's, it's, it's one hertz. Oh, I'm trying to see this now. 0 0.001 hertz? Yeah. 0 0.001 hertz, um, which not there, and it's rock solid. So I just like I've actually fixed that. Um, I just need to do that final little bit of calibration work on it to get that nice. Um, I've tidied up the ceramic there. I don't. I shouldn't really use the ceramic there. I should use something else. Um, 10 pf. Yeah, it's a bit frequency. Uh, temperature sensitive so it may or may not be a problem but it also like it's in there and the uncow is actually going away hold on if I turn the eye put back on again there you go uncow has now gone away um, if I do uh, if I increase this output too much it will go uncow as well so there might be an issue with the output levels. Oh, voltage reset, come on. There we go. So anything above one volts is on cal. I don't know if that's normal or not. Um, I might have to check the manuals, but uh, yeah, it's working and the output it's got Really nice. So the video on. Uh, yeah, cool. It's working. So it certainly seems promising anyway. It's um looks like it's doing what it should be doing now. I might have actually fixed it. Um I still get that noise when it first turns on. I, I think I'm gonna have to go through the calibration procedure and actually just check this because there's a certain way of calibrating it using the reference. And um, I set this based on the loop on the outside stuff like that. Um, but now I've got the crystal oscillator working properly, I can actually do that. Um, I've only done the, the coarse tune, I've got the fine tune there yet. I need to I set that in the centre before I put it all back together. So the fine tune is um, adjustable. I might just give it a slight tweak to get that um, bang on 10 megahertz. My um, fixed account I know is bang on because I, um, I calibrate that against the Rubidium standard which I've got here and um, so I'm comfortable that's okay. So I'm going to set this to be the same as my fixed account and I should be pretty accurate with that. Okay. Okay I've got my Rubidium standard running just to check my calibration meter. It's still stabilising, it's only been on about 10 minutes. But it's still jumping up and down slightly as I set them down. So there it is there. Um, and you know, see how close the meter is, but it's, it's just jump up and down a little bit because it's still stabilizing, it's not actually fully warmed up yet. But uh, see, it's still pretty close. Okay, it's all stabilized now, and see what the frequency is sitting at. So, my count is slightly out, not much. Uh, so, what we've got that's um. 20 kilohertz, 10 kilohertz, 1 kilohertz, 100 hertz, 10 hertz, 1 hertz, 0.1 hertz, oh, bit noise there. Um, that's 0.1 hertz, 0 0.01 hertz, so it's 0 0.05 hertz out, which I suppose isn't too bad, is it? Obviously, got some noise coming through now, but yeah, it's, it was 
doing quite well now. Okay, let's come back to this and just give it a little tweak. What I've done now is I've set the frequency to match what the rubidium standard was doing. So that should now be bang on frequency. Well, at least this should be bang on frequency. That's allowing for my counter being out by 50 millihertz, is that? Oh, I got it anyway. 105 hertz. Um, so, that's that all good. Let's just stick this program in. Um, probably having a 10 second to fish rate to wait a while. So that's the internal 10 megahertz. Which I did have a close enough for. Here we go, that's better. Must be a bit of noise. It's getting closer. Yeah, I might have tweaked that slightly more. Also, your various temperature. Now I've got, I haven't got the covers on, the fans blowing across it, and stuff like that. So, probably won't be able to tune that popular until I actually get the covers back on it.